what changes can be made to a whole food plant-based diet to lower blood pressure? Oh my, uh, blood pressure is so important uh, to keep in appropriate ranges. Uh, why? Because our blood vessels and the organs attached to them are made to run at a fairly low but steady blood pressure. If the blood pressure gets too high, um, uh, every time the heart beats, this pressure wave comes whistling down the arteries and bangs into the very delicate tissues like the kidney filters in your kidneys and the glomeruli, um, the retinal cells in your eye. Uh, these are delicate, one-cell thin structures and they don't take high pressures well. And as the years go by, the high pressures pound against these delicate membranes and they thicken, they bleed, uh, and people get kidney disease and blindness and heart failure, etc. So you want to keep that running pressure for your arteries uh, around the 110-70 range or uh, up to 120-80, one, uh, probably not too much higher than that. Uh, what do those numbers mean? Uh, when the heart contracts, uh, there's a pressure wave that comes out of the heart and goes out the big blood vessels. Uh, and at the peak of that wave, uh, it should be a pressure high enough to raise a column of mercury 110 or 120 millimeters into the air. That's the systolic pressure. That's the force of systole, the contraction of the heart. Then when the heart relaxes, that's called diastole. And in that one split second, the blood pressure falls just for a second as the ventricle is filling up for the next beat. And during that little dip uh, in between beats, uh, that lower pressure, that's called a diastolic pressure. And that's an important number because that's the lowest pressure your arteries get to look at. That's, the, that's that one split second they get to pure relax. And you like that pressure to drop down to, as I said, 70s uh, or so. And 80s uh, are generally acceptable, but uh, within limits, uh, lower is better. So if you're shooting for a pressure of um, between 110, 120 systolic and 70 and 80 diastolic, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, you want to eat those, uh, uh, those <coughs> foods that help those blood vessels relax and dilate. And, and those are the minerals, magnesium and potassium. And guess what? They're in dark green leafy vegetables. Most vegetables are a good supply of potassium. So again, those big salads, those hearty vegetable soups, those big plates of steamed green veggies are good for you in so many ways, including they help lower your blood pressure. So a, a big helping of greens, preferably two or three times a day, big fresh salad, those are really important. Uh, second, you want to avoid those substances that tend to make the blood vessels squeeze uh, or make you retain lots of fluid. More fluid in the pipes raises the pressure in the pipes, as every plumber knows. So we're talking basically about sodium, about salt uh, in your diet, uh, and that's going to make you retain water. It's going to make you stiffen those arteries so that pressure wave whistles down in, in, to the end organs there instead of uh, a nice elastic artery absorbing some of that shock wave that comes out. A high salt diet uh, stiffens those artery walls, turns them into rigid pipes, and that pressure wave really uh, can do some damage uh, to the, again, the kidneys, the eyes, etc. So avoiding excess salt. A pinch of salt at the table is okay, but the problems in the processed foods, the uh, uh, the spaghetti sauce at the Italian restaurant, the soy sauce at the Chinese and Japanese restaurant, uh, the salsa already in the food, you can't do anything about it. And it's usually a lot of it, which is why so many people have heart attacks and strokes after they come back from a restaurant meal, the pressure's way up, they go into heart failure or have other problems from that. So a diet with lots of potassium and magnesium from the greens, very little added sodium, uh, a, a, within, within limits, as I said, a pinch of salt at the table is okay. Are there other things that can help dilate those blood vessels? Uh, we're learning that uh, things in uh, hibiscus tea, apparently, a cup of that a couple times a day helps relax and dilate those blood vessels and lets the pressure come down. Uh, uh, there's been some reports that uh, green tea uh, will also uh, help the blood vessels relax a bit. So if you look around for herbal preparations uh, to help lower the, uh, uh, the pressure, you can find them. But it's basically one comes out of a whole food plant-based diet. Uh, 
too much uh, processed foods, uh, too many restaurant meals, etc. They have uh, they have hydrogenated oils. They have uh, cooked vegetable oils. Uh, they have sugars. All these things injure the artery walls and make them lose that elasticity. So again, that whole food, underlying whole food that hasn't uh, been overly processed is really important. And finally, we saw at uh, True North Health Center where I worked, a water fast is very effective in lowering blood pressure. And uh, if you are someone tussling with high blood pressure and you got that 150-90 dog in you all the time, uh, here's a, a person who might benefit from, say, from Friday to Monday to, to just uh, either drink water or vegetable broth. And you might want to do that uh, like every other weekend uh, or every weekend. I have some patients who are doing that. And so this intermittent fasting or uh, repeated short fast during the month uh, it can be very effective at lowering blood pressure as well. So those are a number of strategies that if you employ them, but again, get the, if, if you've got extra body fat, uh, that's going to be an issue. Uh, for, there's a number of reasons. For every pound of fat on the body, there, if you took all the little capillaries and veins in one pound of body fat and stretched them out end to end to end to end, they would go out for a mile. For every pound of body fat, there's a mile of blood vessels. Your heart's got to pump blood through. Well, you're carrying an extra 20, 30 pounds of fat on you. That's an extra 20 or 30 miles of blood vessels. You're asking your heart to pump blood through, and it takes a higher pressure to force that blood through there. Um, these heavy fats, and I think uh, coconut oil certainly, and them certainly meat and dairy fats, they make the blood thicker. They make the blood more viscous. Well, if you're trying to pump viscous blood through tiny little capillaries, it takes a higher pressure. It's like trying to force molasses through a soda straw. It takes a higher pressure to do that. So, uh, so don't you want to eat a high fat diet and you don't want to wear excess body fat on your belly. And so this lovely whole food plant-based diet that we're promoting uh, for all the nice blood vessel relaxing and dilating effects it has, it also turns you into a lean person. Yeah, that's going to help lower that pressure big time. Uh, so uh, do what you need to do to trim down, get rid of that extra body fat, uh, keep those high potassium, high magnesium foods going, uh, and uh, avoid the salts and the fats and the oils that can raise them. And uh, take a good walk every day. You've got to rev that engine up. Uh, why? Because when your heart is beating fast, your blood vessels dilate to get more blood to your muscles. Well, that lowers blood pressure when you dilate the blood vessels. So being a lean, fit, healthy person uh, on a whole food plant-based diet with lots of potassium and magnesium uh, is, is your ticket to normal blood pressures. If you have to use medications for a year, two or three to lower down, if you've had high blood pressure for years and years and years, it's, and you've adopted a plant-based diet, don't expect tomorrow morning, boom, 11070. It may take years for those blood vessels that have been so tight and spasmy and full of salt and dealing with high pressure for 20 years, 30 years. It may take them 6, 12, 18, 24 months to finally relax enough and have that pressure come down. But it happens to the majority of people eventually. So perseverance furthers. Keep, uh, keep eating that healthy food. Keep taking that walk every day. Re reduce the stress as much as you can because when you're under stress, your adrenal glands put out adrenaline and, and that tightens your blood vessels. So um, be a person of good weight with a good, good attitude, a healthy plant-based diet, and, uh, and uh, normal blood pressure should uh, be one of the indicators that you're living a healthy life. So good luck following all of that. It's doable uh, and, uh, and it's fun and delicious as well. So what more can you ask? And you're uh, absolutely right. If you, and if you do, tell your doctor, if you're on a high blood pressure pill, on several of them, tell your doctor that you've adopted a healthier diet. You don't have to get into the plant-based thing we would ever tell them. I'm, I'm having a, a change in my diet, uh, and I'm expecting my blood pressure to go down. If it goes down, I start getting lightheaded. Will you work with me to reduce the medications? That's how you'll know that it's time to reduce your blood pressure pills. If you stand up and, ooh, get lightheaded, that's low blood pressure. <laughs> that's not low blood sugar. That's low blood pressure. Uh, your pressure's dropping too, too far. Tell your doctor how about 
cutting my pill doses in half or stopping them. And so, uh, so work with your doctor. Let, let her know uh, that you're adopting a healthier diet you know, and uh, be a responsible patient. Good luck. It's an important journey. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Each day, Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our daily Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.